Hey, have you ever wondered how to read WhatsApp messages from someone else's phone without them even knowing? In this video, we're going to explore 10 different methods, but just for educational purposes only. The main goal here is to help you understand the vulnerabilities so you can better protect your own privacy. Remember, knowledge is power, and it's all about safeguarding your digital life. This one's simple, but honestly, it's pretty effective. All it takes is quick access to someone's phone, then you just scan the QR code. Just like that, the entire WhatsApp account is mirrored onto a laptop. Most users don't even notice that small WhatsApp web active notification, which is kind of scary. So just a reminder, always keep your phone secured and locked. Notification mirroring apps like Pushbullet or AirDroid can forward your WhatsApp notifications, including message previews, to another device. If someone installs one of these apps and grants it notification access on your phone, they can silently receive your WhatsApp notifications elsewhere. To protect yourself, regularly check your phone's notification access settings. Revoke access for any app you don't recognize or trust, and never leave your phone unlocked with others, even for a short time. This is what I call the Google Drive Backup Raid. WhatsApp on Android lets you back up your chat history to Google Drive. These backups aren't protected by WhatsApp's end-to-end -end encryption once on Google's servers. They're secured by your Google account security. If someone accesses your Google account, they can access your backups. They can install WhatsApp on a new device, use your number, and restore from your Google Drive backup. WhatsApp will restore the backup on their device. Use a strong, unique password for your Google account. Enable two-factor authentication for added security. This ensures that even if your password is stolen, they can't log in without the second code. Spyware apps are a real threat to your WhatsApp privacy. Apps like mSpy and FlexiSpy can be installed on your phone to secretly monitor your activity. To install them, someone needs physical access to your unlocked phone for several minutes. They may also need to disable security settings or sideload the app from outside the official app store. Once installed, these apps can read your WhatsApp messages, record everything you type, take screenshots, track your location, and access your photos, contacts, and call logs. These apps run invisibly, with no icon or notifications. Protect yourself by keeping your phone locked and never leaving it unattended. Watch for signs like strange phone behavior, rapid battery drain, overheating, or unusual data usage. Run a reputable mobile security scan to check for spyware. WhatsApp has this official feature that lets you link up to four devices to your account. It even works if your main phone is off, which is kind of wild. I tried it myself, linked a spare phone, and, yeah, got full access to everything. The only clue you might have is a small note in the linked devices menu. So just a reminder, check your linked devices regularly. Method number six is the export chat feature. With just a few taps, you can package up an entire chat history, every message, optionally including media, into a zip file and email it. If someone has your unlocked phone, even briefly, they can email your chat to themselves. They just tap the menu, select more, then export chat. Choose to include media or not, then pick an email app. Type in their email, hit send, and it's done. They can delete the sent email and then delete it from the trash. The whole thing can be done in under a minute, leaving almost no trace. You wouldn't get a notification and there'd be no linked devices to spot. They'd have to repeat this for each chat. The defense? Never leave your phone unlocked and unattended. That lock is your best protection. Screen mirroring can let others see everything you do on your phone in real time if abused. Someone with access to your phone can quickly enable screen mirroring and connect to a device they control. Watch for a small casting icon in your status bar. This means your screen is being shared. Never connect to unknown or suspicious devices, even if they have harmless names. Regularly check your status bar for unexpected casting or recording icons. Disable screen mirroring when not in use, especially in environments with many smart devices. Stay alert. Quick action can stop screen mirroring abuse before your chats or data are exposed. Okay, method number eight is where we take a significant leap in complexity and criminality. This is SIM card cloning. This isn't something a casual snooper can do. 
It requires technical skill and specialized hardware, but it's a known attack vector and it's devastatingly effective. A SIM card contains a unique identifier that tells the cellular network who you are. Cloning a SIM means creating a perfect, functional duplicate of your SIM card. To do this, an attacker would first need to get physical possession of your SIM card, even for a few minutes. They would use a card reader and software to extract the secret authentication keys from the chip. Then, they'd write those keys onto a blank, programmable SIM card. The result is two SIM cards that appear to the network as the exact same user. This is highly illegal, but it's possible. Once they have a cloned SIM, they have immense power. They can intercept your phone calls and your SMS messages. And most importantly, for this discussion, they can receive the SMS verification codes that services like WhatsApp use to set up an account. They can install WhatsApp on their own phone, enter your number, and when WhatsApp sends the six-digit code via SMS to verify ownership, their phone with the cloned SIM receives it. They can then register your WhatsApp account on their device effectively kicking you out and taking it over. At that point, they have full access. The defense against this is multi-layered. First, protect your SIM card physically. Use a SIM tray that requires a tool to open. Second, many carriers offer extra security like a port out password or account pin. Set that up. This makes it much harder for someone to socially engineer your carrier into giving them a new SIM for your number, which is a related attack called a SIM swap. Number 9 is a broader version of the Google Drive exploit we talked about earlier. This is the Cloud Sync exploit, and it applies to the full device backups that your phone's manufacturer offers. I'm talking about Apple's iCloud backups for iPhones and services like Samsung Cloud or others for Android devices. These services are incredibly convenient, creating a complete snapshot of your entire phone. These backups don't just save your contacts and photos, they save everything your app data, your system settings, your home screen layout, and in many cases, the locally stored data for apps like WhatsApp. If an attacker can compromise the credentials for your primary cloud account, your Apple ID, or your Samsung account, they can do some serious damage. They could get a new empty phone, log in as you, and restore your most recent backup to it. The result is a near-perfect clone of your phone in their hands. When they open WhatsApp on that restored device, it will often be logged in and ready to go, containing all the chats that were present when the backup was made. It's like having a ghost image of your digital life. And just like with the Google Drive method, the weak link isn't the phone itself. It's the password you chose for that cloud account. This really drives home the point that your digital security is a chain, and it's only as strong as its weakest link. You might have a super secure phone with a complex passcode and biometrics, but if you're using password 123 for your iCloud or Samsung account, you've left the back door wide open. Use a strong, unique password for every important account, and please turn on two-factor authentication for all of them. It is your single most important defense against this kind of account takeover. Sometimes you know the simplest method is actually the most dangerous. Just leaving your phone unattended puts you at risk. For example, a friend could access your unlocked phone in just a few seconds. So just remember to always use your lock screen, enable biometrics, and honestly, never hand your phone to someone you don't trust. So let's recap. We've covered 10 methods, ranging from simple tricks to really advanced exploits. The key lesson here is that awareness equals protection. A few quick security tips. Always use strong passwords, enable two-factor authentication whenever you can, and keep your phone locked and close to you. And hey, if you found this helpful, subscribe for more tech awareness content. Stay safe out there.